everybody, this is JD Gaming back today with a very exciting, unusual video for this channel in light of recent events of me having quit my job and lots of things happening and finally me getting a chance to come back to the channel, live my life. I wanted to do something to really be memorable. And so we're going all the way back to the beginning to 2003, a uh, year after this game began with my very first tin that I ever opened. Obviously, this Tinzo isn't the exact one that I opened because this thing is still sealed. I went on eBay and spent 500 bucks just to get this thing because YouTube wasn't a thing in 2003. It came out in 2006 and I didn't have a channel until 2014, but now we have the ability to not only relive the nostalgia, but also capture it as kind of this memory that I'm able to share with you guys as well. So wanted to do something really, really big. So let me know down below what you think of this opening. And if you do want to see more openings, I am not an opening channel, but I do things of significance from time to time or things that are more unique. And I do have another one, another fan favorite available to open sometime sooner rather than later. So definitely subscribe and let me know what you think of this one if you'd like to see that as well but enough of that time to get right into this oh man this nostalgia right here we have the little sticker on the shrink wrap too five packs one legend of blue eyes white dragon which isn't even hyphenated like blue eyes is officially in this game one metal raiders one magic ruler one pharaoh's servant one labyrinth of nightmare and a variant card one of six this tin unfortunately did get just a little bit dinged up in transit but totally fine i figured once i open it, i can actually pop it back from the other side but man, this thing looks cool. You have the classic Yu-Gi-Oh! logo with the original font that we have on the back of our cards, and it doesn't even say Shonen Jump or anything else. Uh, back around Generation Force time, at the very beginning of Caesar in 20 era in 2011 is when they updated it to that kind of Comic Sans kind of logo that we have nowadays. And of course, we have that glorious uh, logo here as well. Collectible tin. Collect all six tins with six variant cards. Each collectible tin includes the same packs we mentioned. Still, Blue Eyes White Dragon is not hyphenated as blue hyphen eyes. Oh, whatever. We have Upper Deck Entertainment with that uh, Sea Otter Place Carlsbad address uh, before, of course, they got sued into oblivion and had to take their name off of Yu-Gi-Oh! products. This uh, barcode's actually kind of faded in yellow. I don't know if it was originally like that because of the tin color being yellow or if it's just this old, but man, I can't wait. Let's crack this baby right open here. So here we go. This is expensive, yes, but that's one of the cool things about modern things, uh, technology, we're able to go and uh, preserve this. And I probably could have brought scissors, but no, I didn't want to. And now I'm no simply unlucky, but I do agree. You got to use all five senses on something as old as this. And oh man, you can't really spell it on the tin. <laughs> as you would say, get a whiff of this. We're going to get that on the actual uh, cards themselves. But man, Look at how gorgeous this thing looks. Oh my gosh. It looks even better outside of that. Forgot we have the Millennium Puzzle here. Here's that logo on the side again. Here's the back of the tin again. Man, this thing looks awesome. My old tin actually got tarnished so badly that it does not pop off like this. So very, very cool. Um, I should be able to fix this thing momentarily here. But man... Wow, what a clean lid. I love this. And the original packs, again, these don't say like, um, uh, well, they're not first edition, obviously, but they don't have like, a, uh, you know, the old logo, Shonen Jump and all that stuff. You have the US and Canada editions of all these. We have the Blue Eyes White Dragon. We have Metal Raiders. We have Magic Ruler before they changed it to Spell Ruler and before all the spell cards were changed to that because of Magic the Gathering. We have Pharaoh's Servant, Labyrinth of Nightmare, and there it is. I honestly was a bit surprised to see it like this with the same gorgeous color saturation that it had way back when I first remember this card. Oh my gosh, this Jinzo looks absolutely stunning let me change the lighting a bit here so we can get a look at that card i was surprised at the fact that this thing was just sitting at the bottom here but man oh man i'll, I'll have to tuck this in a sleeve it's just 
pristine. I remember taking this card around with me everywhere. If you remember, like, Toy Story and, like, Andy, that kid took his, like, toys everywhere. I took my cards everywhere. They were in top loaders, but, you know, that's just the kind of kid I was. So let's do this. And uh, just the order that the packs went through. I know people like going in, you know, reverse order because they're like, oh, save the best for last. But uh, I don't know. I kind of like Labyrinth of Nightmare. Uh, the most out of all these, even though I started in Magic Ruler days and, you know, Jinzo comes with Pharaoh's Servant, Labyrinth of Nightmare was just like, there's so many cards I wanted from this set. This was when I was really into the game in the first round of seeing it. All the masks, all the Battle City cards, so we're doing that for last. So, if you look at the back, this is actually kind of interesting. They don't even mention uh, secret rares in here, even though they mention the uh, ratios of the cards. So first you have this old text. In ancient Egypt, there existed a force so powerful it had to be locked away for a millennia, which I think is plural for millennium, so it's kind of weird. Now one boy has released the power. It's time to duel. Nine cards in every pack, 82 common cards, eight per pack, 22 rare cards, one per pack, 10 super rares, one in six, and 10 ultra rare cards, one in 12. And if you haven't seen my series on the uh, four fun facts in Yu-Gi-Oh, the very first one I talk about how secret rares were actually secrets, and this is exactly what I mean here. So very cool, very, really just awesome. Um, it even says a random assortment of 124 cards, even though there is a triple zero card. And then Gaia the Dragon Champion, I'm pretty sure is uh, 125, if I'm not mistaken. But man, this is so cool. We're going to go ahead and open this thing. And I'm going to have to take a whiff again. You got to you gotta use all your senses. You know, you, you got to stay grounded, be mindful, and just uh, enjoy everything going on. And oh my gosh, anyone who's played old Yu-Gi-Oh! can tell you these cards smell the same. In fact, uh, I guess uh, from a pharmacist speaking, as, as someone with a medical background, I could say um, a lot of memories are actually very strongly linked to the sense of smell in particular. And so it makes sense. There's actually a basis for, you know, why Simply Unlucky does that. And it really brings back the memories. We have Fog King, a fiend that dwells in a blinding curtain of smoke. Beaver Warrior. Oh, pack's already OP. Better stop right there before we go overboard, right? Uh, we got Petite Dragon. Very small dragon known for its vicious attacks. Root Water. Uh, I remember seeing this thing uh, very early on in Duel Links. And got Fissure as our rare because these are old packs and not reprinted. In addition to being able to tell because like it says for US and Canada and doesn't have the updated logo or Shonen Jump or anything on there, uh, we are not going to get any cards uh, beyond this set here uh, as a rare here. So Fisher, and interestingly, it is a spell card now that I'm looking at. So this Magic Ruler might be from the time where it was Magic Ruler the set, but they changed cards to spell cards already. I wasn't aware that it was that fast in the era, um, but it's still interesting to see nonetheless. We got an Umi. Um, we have Hinotama Soul, our male with two L's, and the 13th Grave. So we'll put the rare up here just so we kind of remember. But man, pretty lackluster set overall, honestly. If we're being honest, that's why I don't like opening Legend of Blue Eyes last. It's just, unless you pull like a pot of greed as your rare, or like an Exodia piece, or like one of the, the main vanilla monsters, you're not really getting too much. There's too much crap in the set. That's just what it is. Metal Raiders is where things pick up with tons of effect monsters, not just the five in the original set, and really powerful cards like Mirror Force, Beast Skull Dragon, which now I guess would be called Black Skull Dragon if they uh, reprint it that way. And, uh, yeah, lots of cool counter traps as well. So we're going to go ahead and open this card. This uh, this pack here looks like it has uh, 142 cards in this set. So it's actually a bigger one here. Uh, we're going to go ahead. I, I got to take a whiff of every single one of these guys. I'm sorry, but it's just... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the same smell so far. I don't notice uh, any change. We're going to go ahead and open the corners to make sure we get uh, everything out safely. And I do want to kind of keep the pack wrappers because this is all part of the memories too. I don't like hoarding things in general, but I'll make an exception. Guardian of the Labyrinth. We just got a retrained Link monster of this card, so that's kind of cool. Tainted Wisdom. One of the things that you mix with ancient brain to form Skull Knight. We have the original Harpy Lady, uncensored artwork and everything before the Lost Art uh, even. They didn't do a Lost Art for the original Harpy. 
We have Hiato Karo. This card is hilarious if you've never seen it. When this card is changed from attack position to defense position, you can place any number of cards from your hand at the bottom of your deck in any order you desire. So you just go through all these hoops to minus as hard as you can. It doesn't even have the 1700 attack stat. That's its defense, 900 attack. This card is just pitiful. It's, it's kind of funny. We have Elegant Egotist as a rare. It is a spell card as well. And uh, yeah, so I guess so far, rare for rare, uh, you know, rare per pack, uh, two for two rather. Baby Dragon, that's still a cool card. I don't think I've ever pulled this in me uh, Metal Raiders directly, so that's kind of neat to see. Launcher Spider, Deep Sea Shark, interesting uh, instant fusion thing. Uh, back in the day for casual and we have sword of deep seated card from memories as well so we have two rare spell cards thus far time to open magic ruler now this was when i entered this game my friend showed me and gave me a bunch of cards from the set so magic ruler holds a special place in my heart i have a blister pack seal that i'm never going to open just for the memories because, uh, you know, sometimes it's just the memories that are going to be worth more than any card you could pull out of a set so here we go. We have uh, 17 rares, uh, 10 and 10 for the other foils. And this is 102 cards, so much smaller of a set. Let's go right into Magic Ruler here and see how things go. All right, so we got this pack completely open. And yeah, why not? We're going to... Same spell. <laughs> but I, I just don't know. Like, you can't... It, it's, it's different in this set versus, uh, or in these cards, these older sets versus nowadays. Like, it's just a different smell. Probably production process, probably some... Upper deck carcinogens, I don't know. Jigen Bakudan, the infamous time bomb. Flash Assailant was uh, kind of fun in Duel Links. We got Turtle Oath, a uh, card I never had when I was a kid, even though Crab Turtle was one of my first cards. In fact, I would call that my very first card. We have Twin Long Rods number two. I don't believe TCG has yet been graced with the presence of Twin Long Rods, the original. We got Giant Rat. Even though it's a rare, I'm very happy to pull this one because this is one of my favorite cards from back in the day. Being able to tutor out any number of awesome earth monsters and make an earth toolbox deck this has just been one of my absolute favorites so i'm very glad to pull that one honestly um even if it's not a valuable card so far uh you're seeing the full force of how difficult it is to pull foils especially with old ratios again super is one in six we're not even guaranteed uh with just odds and technically speaking if you go into the mathematics you're closer to like 66 63 i don't know some percentage there uh if you reach odds so uh yeah fun things i learned while shiny hunting pokemon got malevolent nuzzler ancient one of the deep forest and uh fire kraken uh for our last card there never got the actual um i forget what it's called that it's it's, it's like another kraken card um i like how this pack just feels darker more saturated than um what we get nowadays i actually opened one of those monster boxes at a walmart the other day and they gave you the reprinted pharaoh's servant pack from the legendary collection just doesn't feel the same of course logo is different and everything but this one is a hundred three card set add two because of the secrets this is triple zero and uh of course uh, imperial order is the card we can get here and uh gotta open this all the way Yep, still so far, smells the same. I guess it makes sense, you know, same company making all the cards, gonna smell the same. We got Cyber Falcon here. Shadow of Eyes, I remember seeing this on the show and thinking, wow, this card must be good. And it's like, I've, I've never played this card in a deck even back in the day. Uh, got Drill Bug to fetch that Parasite. Parasite, got a Dark Fire Soldier number one. Appropriate, uh, but not appropriate as an appropriate or inappropriate, but to appropriate. Uh, that's why it's drawing cards when your opponent does. Eh, you know, take it or leave it. It's not bad. It's not good. It's just, it is what it is. But it's still cool seeing all these cards. And I got to say, the nostalgia in and of itself is worth it. All seeing White Tiger. We got Ground Collapse. I remember everyone thinking, oh my gosh, when Link Monsters come out, this card is going to be OP. And then, like, no one played it. So <laughs> it's kind of funny to see that. Light of Intervention, preventing you from setting cards. Um, and Steel Ogre Grotto, number two. Interesting thing. Um, it almost seems like in the show, in the anime, they always played as if Light of Intervention is on the field. Other than one duel, uh, Yugi's first against the Rare Hunter, where he seemed to play this card to prevent setting face down. I think the main reason for that is just because it makes for a better show when monsters are face up and you see the cards instead of just everything's always face down but i don't know just a tangent i always thought that was interesting and finally we have labyrinth the nightmare if we pull something really cool in here i mean this is a set with gemini elf magic cylinder the masked beast 
mask uh, cards in general, like we have Mask of Restrict, Mask of the Accursed, Mask of Dispel, I remember I bought at like a, basically nowadays it'd be kind of like a weeb place <laughs> is what it evolved to, but way back in the day, uh, it, it was a really, really cool place I visited as a kid. Still cool now, though it has changed. This just set, it, this set is just full of so much nostalgia. I remember there were certain reprints of cards like Dark Necrofear and Mass Beast in the Duelist Leagues. And um, just wanting those promo cards at like my local Meyer, I remember not being able to sleep as a kid. Like that's just, that's something irreplaceable, right? Like I miss that kind of excitement where it's like, oh my gosh, I just can't even go to bed because I am so, so excited about everything that's going on. So, man, good times. And this tin is really capturing that memory, including all the, the disappointment. <laughs> at least you got Genzo, right? 103 cards in this set. So same as Magic Ruler, if I'm not mistaken, unless I'm like off by a card. I don't know. But let's see if this... Yep. Same classic Yu-Gi-Oh smell. Now, I don't know. I, 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 I do get tired of it, like back to back to back on every pack, but just had to confirm, you know, when else am I going to get a chance like this again? We got Lady Panther. We have Grand Tiki Elder. We have Cure Mermaid. We got Ekibio Drakmord, or maybe it's Ekibio Drakmord. This card has terrified many young people, myself included. Played it because it was pretty interesting on the playground. Um, monster equipped with this card cannot attack. Destroys the equipped monster at the end of the second turn of the player controlling the monster. At the time, the card is returned to the owner's hand, or this card is returned to the owner's hand. So, very interesting card. We got Tornado Bird as our rare. No foils or anything, so a bit disappointing, but alas, I had a lot of fun. And the Tornado Bird actually is a card I remember pulling from Labyrinth of Nightmare, so we don't need any amazing pulls to have fun with this. This is just a really, really cool thing. I I just can't get over the nostalgia with this, so this is very cool. This is a flip effect monster that has returned two Speller Traps on the field to the hands of their owner. You could also use your own cards, which is kind of interesting. And I'm not sure if those are eyes uh, or if those are like plain windows. I've never been able to tell. I think you could interpret it either way. And then we have Dream Sprite. Uh, we got Grave Robbers Retribution. I thought this card was in Ferrana Guardian, to be honest, based on the theme. But holy crap, this artwork. It's kind of scary if you think of the fact that you're being buried alive and uh, trapped by one, two. And I guess there's a third mummy. I've never even seen that. And this card says, during each of your standby phases, inflict 100 points of direct damage to your opponent's life points for each of your opponent's monster cards that have been removed from play. All that old verbiage. Mm, love it. We got Gadget Soldier and Fairy Guardian. And I didn't mention this because I generally tend to, like, not really touch the fronts of the cards and backs of the cards that much. Other than, I guess, when I was opening the packs, I did it. But these have a different feel to them. Like, this, the card stock feels different. There's, like, a different, you know, uh, if you handle them, you'd know the difference. It just feels very different. But to me, as a player who's played since way back in the day, it's a very, very familiar feeling. So, well, that's going to do it for now, guys. This is the Jinzo Tin. So definitely let me know what you thought of this adventure. You can't win every single thing. And sometimes it's not about pulling the expensive rare cards because, let's be honest, none of the cards in this pack uh, and this tin would have been that expensive anyway relative to the $500 tin but man it was just so cool being able to relive a memory from childhood share it with you guys as well and uh, don't forget next time we'll be opening a dark magician girl tin which is a fan favorite of course as well so can't wait to share that with you guys so let me know what you think and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss that so Thanks, guys. This is JD Gaming. Hope you guys enjoyed, as always, and I'll see you guys next time. That's it for now, but feel free to grab one of these videos on your way out. If you really enjoyed what you saw today, remember to subscribe to JD Gaming for more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. Thanks, guys. This is JD Gaming. Hope you guys enjoyed, as always, and I'll see you guys next time.